There is only one reason I would sport a moustache like I'm wearing at the moment, and it's because it's Movember. That <laughs> and only that. Mark Pilgrim is with me in the studio. His broadcasting career started at the age of 12. He would ride around the streets of Creel with a battery-operated microphone and a speaker announcing Lost Dogs, which he obviously fabricated. Today, he's a decorated broadcaster, just last year winning an MTN Radio Award for the Best Commercial Music Show. It's been quite a ride, Mark. It really has. And I have to say, when I was riding around the streets of Creel on a bicycle at the age of 12, that was the last time a moustache was really fashionable. <laughs> I deserve that. And this is about to come off, so maybe when it comes off, we just leave it off. What do you say? People are dying to know, is it real? Yes. Is it real? Is it yours? It's, it's not mine, but it is real. How's that? <laughs> well, there it goes. It's come right off, you know. So the owner wants it back. The owner wants it back. It's going to walk off my face. What do you know? Yep. What Mark's here for is not necessarily to talk about moustaches and joke about, you know, uh, Indian hair. Uh, at the age of 18, he was diagnosed with, with testicular cancer. Thank you, because I couldn't take you seriously. <laughs> I wasn't listening to a word you were saying there. Yeah, so let's get back. I mean, can you imagine going from that to cancer? That's, you know, hard segue. But Mark, it's true. 18, yeah. testicular cancer. I mean, that's a rough diagnosis to get. What, what, what sort of symptoms? I mean, how was the diagnosis? Made? Well, testicular cancer is one of the most prevalent cancers for, for young yeah. guys. And I think for all that Lance Armstrong has had a bad rap in recent times, one of the good things he's done in recent years is get people to talk about testicular cancer and the awareness thereof. So I had a testicle that was eventually, I would imagine, swollen to the size of what feel, felt like an avocado pear. Wow. But the problem was I didn't know how long I had it for. Was it a few days it was swollen? Was it a few weeks? I was the ostrich with the head in the sand. I ignored it. And what was happening then, it was coursing through my veins to other parts of my body at the same time. That's right, because it uh, spread to your lungs and to your kidneys. Yeah, myself. absolutely. Okay. And treatment, because that's, I mean, it's one of the most successfully treated cancers, but it's mm. still serious treatment. Well, you have a testicle removed, okay. which is traumatic. For an 18 year old? It is, especially when you haven't had much opportunity to use your bob and tackle. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, it's a life saving thing they have to do. And then it was chemotherapy, and I think the dreaded C, for most people, they think dreaded C cancer. For a cancer patient, the dreaded C is chemotherapy. Yeah. And how did you pull through? I mean, 18, you, you, you know, what are you living for in that sense? I mean, what, what sort of held you together and said, I'm going to get through these nine months of chemo, four hours a day, hectic? You have your good days, you have your bad days. I always say it's almost like when you go on a, a diet and you have your cheat day on a Sunday. It's okay to have a bad day. There were days I woke up and I said, I can't do this anymore. And I allowed myself just that moment to regroup. And the next day I'd say, okay, I was wallowing in self-pity yesterday. Today I'm back on that horse and I'm gonna fight it. And it's the art of positive thought. I, I stopped saying to myself, I will not die. I started saying, I will survive. And that was the key word that just got me through nine months of chemo. And you've taken that message to so many others who are in a similar situation. So, Mark, I admire what you're doing. And I also admire the fact that you've got two amazing daughters. Most people think that testicular cancer removed the avocado and you're infertile. But that's not the case. I remember looking at my sperm count on the microscope when we were at a fertility lab. And it looked like an apocalypse had happened. <laughs> there was just no movement whatsoever. And my wife and I did try artificial insemination. We tried IVF. It didn't take. We left it. And naturally, it just came about. I've got two gorgeous girls, and despite the jokes, I can see they're both mine. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, fantastic. Uh, and, and again, being Mark Pilgrim, always involved, always promoting. Tell me a bit about Movember. Movember is a great way to create awareness about men's health in general, and specifically testicular cancer and prostate cancer. It's a visual sign to your fellow Mobro that you're involved. So by having the moustache, you might not get nookie for a month. Your wife, or your wife might say, hands off, but I appreciate it. You mean this won't give me any kind of accent? Look at that. Come on, honey. Come on. I'll chat your wife a bit later. But what is great, it creates awareness. It's about raising money and it's about awareness. It's a two-pronged approach to Movember. And having that moustache is just a, a sign of solidarity that you're, you're in it for a good cause. And is it just the moustache? I mean, to become a Mobro, I just grow a top lip kind of hairline? Or is there something more? Do I sign up? Do I register online? Yeah. What can I do? It is about awareness, but it's about fundraising as well for the Cancer Association of South Africa and the Movember Foundation. So you simply go to the Movember website, you sign up, it takes a minute, and you just ask your mates to start contributing 10 rand, 20 rand, 50 rand, whatever they feel like contributing. In fact, normally the competition is great in that you say to them, okay, the longer I keep this moustache, the more you're going to pay me. 
and it's about raising as much money as possible. I think the total last year was something like 4.7 million. Over 30,000 people got involved in Movember in South Africa. It was 18,000 the year before, so it's, it's growing at a rapid rate. We're going to see a lot of moustaches <laughs> in November. A lot of facial hair. Well, here's to great facial hair. And Mark, thank you. Your positivity just shines out of you, thank man. You, man. And I, I, yeah, I mean, a, a testicular cancer survivor, a heart attack survivor. I don't know what you're going to get next, but I know that there's going to be, going to be a smile on your face and there's going to be that sense of... I've got seven there. lives left. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Pogan. Growing a moustache will increase your awareness, as Mark said, but it won't reduce your risk of getting cancer. So quickly, here are three key tips to help avoiding the big C, cancer, not chemotherapy. Get screened. If you're 40 years old, go for an annual PSA screening test to detect possible prostate cancer. Secondly, do monthly testicular self-examinations, especially between the ages of 15 to 39. As Mark said, it's a young man's disease. And finally, uh, don't smoke and cut down a little on the booze. Mark, thank you so very much once again. This is for you. Because I'm not sure you can grow a moustache. No, but what I'll do is I'll stick it on my head because it'll feel like I've got hair. That is a great up idea. There. There Mark Pilgrim. <laughs>